Hi, I'm Paul McGuire, and I want to give you an urgent and critical prophetic update regarding ISIS, the terrorist organization, Al-Qaeda, the geopolitical situation in the world, the devaluation of the dollar, and other factors that have a prophetic uh, significance. Right now, the federal government has announced a eminent danger regarding a potential terrorist attack at the southern border of the United States of America. Now, whether or not that comes true or not uh, remains to be seen, but it is considered a very significant th uh, threat. Uh, the Drudge Report did a huge story on it, and uh, their source was Judicial Watch. And according to Judicial Watch, uh, ISIS, the terrorist group, um, has launched a headquarters, if you will, uh, a regional headquarters from Juarez, Mexico. And they plan uh, terrorist activities, bombs, uh, and other horrible things at the southern border. But ISIS agents, according to this report, have penetrated uh, uh, into the United States of America. So, uh, hypothetically, there could be ISIS terrorist cells operating in various U.S. cities, and um, the spectrum is wide open as to potentially what they could do. It's a serious, serious threat. Now, this ISIS terrorist threat is um, interrelated with the ISIS terrorist threat going on in Iraq and Syria, and other Middle Eastern regions. In addition, we have Al-Qaeda back in operation, and they're also issuing threats. This is um, really an imminent danger, because this level of chatter, this level of intelligence gathering, t uh, intelligence -gathering activities, um, they have not seen that since uh, uh, prior to uh, 911, when the World Trade Centers went down, so it's very, very serious. On the other hand, we have in in Russia uh, the intent, very possible, uh, for the Russians to invade the Ukraine, and uh, they would be, in a sense, in a conflict with uh, NATO, the EU, the United Kingdom, and the United States of America. What's in the backdrop of that conflict is the devaluation of the U.S. dollar and the plan by Russia and other nations to platform a competing global currency that would uh, topple the U.S. dollar. And they want to uh, organize nations like China and perhaps India uh, and Iran and other nations to come up with a competing world currency. And some of this has been discussed in what is called the BRIC nations. If that happens, that would have catastrophic economic consequences to what is called the transatlantic uh, monetary system, which would be uh, America, Great Britain, uh, and the European Union, and it would cause severe economic uh, repercussions and destabilize, by the way, the world's economy. So we have that going on, and then as we look at what uh, Brzezinski called uh, Eurasia, and that's that great landmass that goes from Russia way down uh, into the Middle East, into Iraq and Iran and Israel, and that massive landmass, and that landmass, by the way, also continues on into the Asian nations, such as China and uh, Vietnam and so on and so forth. That great landmass uh, can be controlled, according to Brzezinski and other theorists, by controlling certain key sectors. And the, the area of oil production is such a key sector. So we have Saudi Arabia. Uh, and their oil production. We have uh, Iran with their oil production. We have Syria with its oil production. And off the coast of Syria, we have uh, uh, the area of Qatar uh, that can produce uh, oil. And we have uh, two things going. Currently, the Russians, in a partnership with Iran, are uh, producing uh, Syrian oil and selling it to China and Europe and making a fortune. 
but U.S. companies would like to go into Syria and start oil production and uh, take over that market. So there's the uh, oil battle and then there's the uh, military theater battle. It's a battle for control of power and uh, control of planet Earth. Now this is what many people uh, don't understand and, and where they have a bias and a prejudice that prevents them from really grasping reality. Now, I deal with this extensively in my book, A Prophecy of the Future of America. I get into the details of this, and it's important, very important for you to grasp this, uh, because unless you grasp this, this you can't really get uh, what's going on and connect the dots on planet Earth. Now, here's what's happening. At the, at the very highest levels of global society, we have what is called the elite. Uh, Aldous Huxley, the author of Brave New World, called them the scientific elite. And this idea of an elite controlling the world, a scientific elite, or an occult elite, uh, sounds conspiratorial to some. And the some that it sounds conspiratorial to are those that are largely uneducated and uh, uh, have done zero research on the topic. But going all the way back to ancient Babylon, the Tower of Babel, and ancient Babylon, by the way, was the world's first one world government, one world economic system, and one world religion. Interestingly enough, God judged Babylon because in the hearts of the men and women of Babylon, they wanted to be God. When you read the writings of the philosopher Plato, he wrote a book called Plato's Republic, and he was an expert on the, uh, what some people believe is the legendary land of Atlantis. Others are convinced that Atlantis existed. And Plato talked about the fact that Atlantis was ruled by 10 god kings. And uh, I get into exactly what that means in detail in my book in terms of their DNA and where their DNA came from. But these elite, these scientific elite, these ten god kings ruled the masses of a super civilization called Atlantis before the flood came and destroyed Atlantis. Now, the elite today, um, the, the most powerful men and women on planet Earth, have a great passion about reading Plato and Plato's Republic because they see themselves as a scientific and supernatural elite who have been given the power to control planet Earth. And they intend to do so. And this is where people have a mental block regarding um, the game plan for what's going on in planet Earth. It's where they have a bias. To get right to the point, and I go into further detail uh, about this in my book, A Prophecy of the Future of America, this uh, 1%, like in the movie Elysium, that rule planet Earth, this scientific elite, they say in their own words, in their own manuscripts, men like H.G. Wells and Bertrand Russell and Aldous Huxley and Brzezinski and many, many, many others, they say over and over again that they're not bound by traditional morality and they're not restrained by traditional morality. Well, what does that mean? It means they don't believe they're accountable to a God uh, for what we would call right or wrong. They believe they've transcended right or wrong. They believe we live in a Darwinian world where might makes right and the fittest survive. And as such, they believe, because they are intellectually and genetically superior, they have the right, for example, to exterminate hundreds of millions of people on planet Earth, if not billions of people. And they're deadly serious about this, and they're in the process of doing it now. Now, when I say something like that, uh, people's defense mechanisms go up. They say it can't be true. This is a conspiracy theory. But inevitably, when you question people who dissent from uh, those facts, uh, you find out that they have done zero reading and zero research on the subject. Because when you look at the writing of these men, this is exactly what they have said they're going to do. Bertrand Russell, 
talked about endless wars. He called for nuclear wars and plagues to destroy hundreds of millions of people because planet Earth was overpopulated. These men have mapped out and planned uh, uh, food shortages, uh, uh, water shortages, vaccinations, the spread of diseases, mass annihilation, um, all to uh, uh, cull the herd. These are the, uh, their words. So they have no problem with slaughtering billions of people as if they were sheep or animals, and they're doing so right now. Now, if you think that's too far-fetched to believe, well, Adolf Hitler did it. And Adolf Hitler believed that he had a genetic right because he was part of the master race, and he annihilated in the Holocaust 8 million people. And the Third Reich was not only an occult uh, dictatorship, but it was a genetic dictatorship. But don't think for a moment that the ideas of Adolf Hitler uh, went away with Hitler. No, they, they have simply been repackaged uh, and they're using new words and new vocabulary, but the game plan is still the same. So when we take the geopolitical situation with Russia and Syria and the Middle East and we take the masses of people in conflict, there are a lot of factors that we need to zero in on. Um, epidemics of diseases, um, wars, mass deaths, starvations, nuclear war, the, the spread of radiation, the decimation of large sectors of planet Earth, which they deem to be overpopulated, um, the culling of the herd, if you will, the, con the consolidation of the wealth of the elite, which is 1%, and then the turning into the masses of mankind to be slaves. You say, well, that sounds so far-fetched. Well, it wasn't far-fetched to Pharaoh and the Egyptian slaves. It wasn't far-fetched to Hitler. It wasn't far-fetched uh, in the Bolshevik Revolution. And it wasn't far-fetched in the Pharaoh uh, God King uh, system. It's only far-fetched to Americans and Europeans that have been somewhat isolated and somewhat privileged. So what do we see? We see what I believe is the four horsemen of the apocalypse uh, galloping towards us in the book of Revelation. And remember, the horses and the horsemen represent things like mass death, uh, biological warfare, uh, 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 mass uh, starvation and food shortages, uh, mass... Uh, uh, economic uh, hyperinflation with a new economic system uh, being put in, and uh, of course mass war. So all of these four horsemen of the apocalypse are destroyers, and behind them are powerful principalities and powers. And this is where there's the great disconnect with a lot of people, because they don't acknowledge a multidimensional universe and the existence of principalities and powers. So this stuff is coming down upon us very quickly. So what do we do? Well, we're not to be passive, we're not to be frightened, and we're not to practice cognitive dissonance as if it was a form of contemplative prayer. God called us to occupy until he comes, and he's given us the power of the Holy Spirit. I have more information uh, for you that will help you and supernaturally equip you at paulmaguire.us. Maguire is M-C-G-U-I-R-E, paulmaguire.us. And this is just a brief clip of what we have for you. And I believe that what we have for you will encourage you with real stuff and a supernatural reality that does exist and biblical truths that transcend uh, the fiery trials of this present moment. God bless you. I'm Paul McGuire.